Good morning, everyone. And good morning to those who are watching in on our live feed on Facebook and who will be watching later either on our Facebook account or on our uh, YouTube account. I want to say a happy Thanksgiving to all of you. We're celebrating in somewhat strange times. I know that, but I still send blessings for your Thanksgiving. And we are coming to you from St. George's in Guelph. I'm Rafe Blackman. I serve as the rector here. I want to acknowledge a few other people who are helping out today. Uh, our greeters who are just checking people as they come in and uh, asking the questions we have to ask and getting them safely seated um, have been Ella Turnbull and Carol Smith. Our soloists for today are Paula Turnbull and Matthias Schmidt. Um, Jerry Manning's our organist and uh, choir director, of course, and he'll be playing the organ and piano today. Um, Bill Rose is our reader. Uh, Lane Tucker is our warden of the day. Tony uh, Tia is our sexton. Laura's here doing the camera work today and making sure everything runs smoothly, as she always does. And I want to acknowledge uh, Elizabeth and George Adams, uh, particularly Elizabeth's creativity in bringing things from her garden those last few weeks and helping the decorations, so we have her to thank for all of these flowers, colorful leaves, the autumnal feel that we celebrate on this Thanksgiving Sunday. As always, we wish to acknowledge that we meet on land that at the time of contact was held by the Attawadrum as an area of trade and ceremony by the two rivers. At various times, the land was occupied by both the Haudenosaunee from the south and the Anishinaabe from the north. In more recent times, the Huron Treaty gave rights to the Mississaugas of the New Credit. May we who dwell on or visit this land also be good stewards and honor those who came before us. Those who are here, and perhaps you downloaded at home, the bulletin will tell you everything you need uh, for the order of service. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds as we're gathered here and at home and wherever we are in the presence of God.
As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And I invite you to join with me in the colic prayer appointed for this day. Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts for all your goodness and steadfast wills to use your bounty well, that the whole human family, today and in generations to come, may give us this give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. You neither sow nor reap or gather in the barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying at a single day, hour to your standing life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, to either toil or spin. And I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow, is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, ye of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that we need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, I speak to you in the name of the one who is our hope and salvation, Jesus the Christ. So I was reading recently, I'm not sure if it was the Archdiocese of Los Angeles or of Anaheim, but the Roman Catholic Archbishop there instructed his priests that they could not go more than five minutes in their homilies, otherwise they'd lose their licenses. Maybe this is a good day to try that out, but most of you know I'm barely getting warmed up at five minutes, but I promise not to be long. What I want to talk about as I'm standing in this wonderful sort of garden set space is what we heard in the readings from Joel, the restoration, uh, the earth coming back to life, uh, and, and what we heard in Matthew about priorities. About priorities is seeking out God's domain, God's kingdom, and about setting aside all those futile things that we worry about and distract ourselves with. When I looked at this this morning, I was thinking about just the cycles that we live in of death and life. And there's always life coming out of death. And that is our message, our hope, the central way we live our faith, that there is always new life coming. I've told you before about my favorite tree the west in the lower mainland in the Pacific Northwest called um, uh, the Arbutus tree. And it's always in a season of dying and in a season of coming into life. It's always losing leaves and growing leaves. It's always losing branches and growing branches. And they're a fascinating metaphor for life and the engagement into life that we're called to have. But we live in such distraction. We do worry about what we're going to wear. My goodness, if you don't think so, you should see the, the tap that Anglican clergy have. Uh, the haberdashery that I've got stacked up back there. What will I wear today? What should I wear today? There's even instructions in my day book. Today is a white day, so you better get the right ensemble on. We worry about what we're going to wear. We worry about, about our clothes. We worry about our housing. We worry about our, 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 what we're going to eat. We worry about all of those things that distract. We worry about our nest eggs. We worry about our taxes. We worry, 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 worry that sometimes I think we forget to live. And life is a gift of living. And what we need to be thankful for is that gift of living, which is in however we can be in relationship with one another, even if it's masked, even if it's distanced, that we always are reaching out, that there is nobody left lonely. This week we had the day that centers on mental health, and it's coincided with this Thanksgiving celebration this year. It's really important for us to think about that how people get into brokenness and isolation because we set up the wrong kingdom. We're living what Matthew calls the kingdom of the Gentiles, the ones who are distracted about what they have, what they need, what they can show off, rather than how they live, which is the kingdom of God. It's not what you have, it's about how you live. 
And it's not about the stuff. The stuff doesn't have, it's benign, it just is, but it's what we do with things, and what we do with our lives, and what we do to keep bringing life where there's brokenness, where there's hurt, where there's despair. What we do to pause ourselves, and maybe we've learned a little bit about this in that COVID time that we've been through and we still are in, about pausing a little bit, about thinking about priorities, about knowing we can't rush through everything. Maybe we've learned a little bit about reaching out to people in different ways. Maybe we've learned a little bit about some priorities, about how we can live with the resources God has given us. I also think about that regeneration that comes in the, in the reading from Joel. That God has punished God's people is the story, and now it's all coming back in the earth. You know, don't worry soil, don't worry animals, don't worry, it's all coming back. And when I think about that, I think about how, how we've been living in this earth and taking way too much, how we've been exploiting, how, how desperate things have become in my lifetime. In my lifetime only, we've lost perhaps 50% of the species of things in the earth. And that's huge to think about. We're all chasing now for, for, for um, whatever we can have um, as a vaccine for the COVID, uh, for the virus, and yet, it's going to probably lead to the slaughter of, of thousands and millions of sharks because key ingredients are in living things. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do it, but we sometimes don't think what's behind. Or even what happens when we get those things that are overpacked from Amazon. I mean, I'll admit, I have a martini now then, and all my martini glasses got broken, so I ordered some martini glasses. They arrived the other day, a huge outer box with paper, an inner box, and then another box, and inside that foam on both sides that was cut to fit the martini glasses, you could have played football with that thing and it wouldn't have broken. But you have to think about what's that do to the earth? And what happens? And the stories we've heard about the returns and where they go. Why I'm bringing this up is that, that I do think that the earth is still under God's compunction and call to be in creation. But we have to partner with that. When we lived out on the West Coast, Marlene and I were there for many years. And we were there at the time Mount St. Helens blew its top and all the ash came up as far as Vancouver, Victoria. And I remember that, that when we were on the Gulf Islands, uh, had a vacation place at the time, or, or the southern Vancouver Island, and you looked across the Salish Sea and down Puget Sound, on a good day you could see all the line of the great volcanoes, Mount Baker, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, and sometimes all the way to California, to Shasta. Huge ones. And then one day, St. Helens wasn't there anymore. You couldn't see it. It had lost its top. And on St. Helens was a lake called Spirit Lake. And I remember all the scientists saying it's a dead lake now. It's absolutely been killed by the ash and everything that went into it. But you know, something strange happened. And we can put science into it, and it was probably with the birds dropping things and all that, but life came back into that lake within just a few years. Fish appeared, life forms appeared. There was flora and fauna all around it. It was still in the call to regenerate, to come back into life, as we have in the story of Joel. And I think we can still do that with God and with each other, if we live for kingdom hope instead of for exploitation. If we live in a kingdom that's not centered on what we have, but what do we need. If we center on a kingdom that's not just about what we need, but about others and what they need. And if we truly love God, and love our neighbors as ourselves. So I think we've got a lot to be thankful for in this Thanksgiving time. And one of the great things that we have to be thankful for is ingenuity and God's love, God's presence, God's forgiveness, God's patience, and that God will work with us if we work with God to bring about the kingdom which is never to be ours, but to be as the kingdom of God that we see in the love we have in Jesus the Christ the one who for us brings life out of death. Amen.
I invite us now to a time of prayer. And as we gather in this time of prayer, I invite us to pray for those things that we're concerned about in the world. Many things that cause us fear. Many things that seem challenging beyond our abilities. Let's pray for the work of the church throughout the world. Particularly our worldwide Anglican Communion as today we remember the Church of the Province of Uganda. Within our Anglican Church of Canada we pray for our many and varied ministries, particularly our leaders, Linda, our Primate, Mark, our National Indigenous Archbishop, and our Metropolitan Archbishop. Within our Diocese for Bishop Susan and the people of Christ Church McNabb. And here at St. George as we pray for our ministries, as we struggle to keep them going, we struggle to reach out and continue to be a presence into the community. And we pray for those as we have begun to do in these last weeks on our parish role as we pray eventually for everyone, but a few each week. And we remember these this week. Ron Baker, Danny and Dorothy Baker, Chris Barber, Eleanor Barr, Marcia Barrett, Margaret Barb, Daryl and Kate Bates and Tayson. Peter and Janet Baumgart, Henry and Krista Bailey, Michael and Mary Ann Bean, David and Christopher. We remember those in hospital from our community, continue to pray for Shirley Spinarski and any others that you may know who are in hospital at this time. And we pray for those who have special need. We pray for Ron, Trevor, Ray, Fred, Doug, Allison, Ted, Carol, Bill, Marilyn, Jim, Rod, Ned, Joanne, Diane, Sago, Inez, Joyce, Vivian, Jim, Andy, Mac, Kate, John, Dave, and any others that you may wish to name before God, either loud or in the silence of your hearts. We pray for the repose of the soul of Janice Barker, strength for her husband Les, daughter Stephanie, and all those who mourn her passing. Let us offer to God a litany of thanks. And the response is, we thank you, generous God. We thank you, generous God. For the beauty and wonder of creation, we thank you, generous God. For all that is gracious in the lives of women and men and children, revealing the image of Christ, we thank you, generous God. For our daily food, for our homes and families and friends, we thank you, generous God. For minds to think and hearts to love, we thank you, generous God. For health, strength, and skill to work, and for leisure to rest and play, we thank you, generous God. For those who are brave and courageous, patient in suffering and faithful in adversity, we thank you, generous God. For all who pursue peace, justice, and truth, we thank you, generous God. Gracious and generous God, creator and giver of all that is good, we thank you for our many blessings. We acknowledge that all that we have is from you, we offer you thanks and praise for the beauty of the earth, our work, our family, our loved ones, and all the gifts that we have been given. Help us to hear your call to be good stewards, caretakers, and managers of all your gifts by sharing them for your purposes. Help us plan to serve our church, our community, and our world with these gifts. And may we serve you and pray with a joyful spirit of mind and heart as we remain your faithful and joyful stewards in Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand as we come to the sharing the peace. And again, unless you're in a very tight bubble, this is a contact in some peace. Um, so dear friends, here and at home and wherever you may be, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
As we present these gifts before God, I invite you to join with me in the prayer over the gifts. Source of all life, the heaven and earth are yours, yet you have given us dominion over all things. Receive the symbols of our labor and love which we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God, our Creator. It is right to offer thanks and praise. Eternal God, source of all being, we give you thanks and praise for your faithful love. You call us into friendship with you and one another to be your holy people, a sign of your presence in the world. When those we trust betray us unfailingly, you remain with us. When we injure others, you confront us in your love and call us to the paths of righteousness. You stand with the weak and those broken and alone, whom you have always welcomed home, making the first class and the last first. Therefore we raise our voices with angels and archangels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Blessed are you, O Holy One. When Hagar was driven into the wilderness, you followed her and gave her hope. When Joseph was sold into bondage, you turned malice to your people's good. When you called Israel out of slavery, you brought them through the wilderness into the promised land. When your people were taken into exile, you wept with them by the river of Babylon and carried them home. At the right time, you sent your anointed one to stand with the poor, the outcast, and the oppressed. Jesus touched lepers and the sick and healed them. He accepted water from a woman of Samaria and offered her the water of new life. Christ knew the desolation of the cross and opened the way for all humanity into the redemption of your reconciling love. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Loving and Holy One, recalling Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you these gifts, longing for the bread of tomorrow and the wine of the age to come. Therefore we proclaim our hope. Dying, we destroyed our death. Rising, we restored our life. Lord Jesus, come and go. Pour out your spirit on these gifts, that through them you may sustain us in our hunger for your peace. We hold before you all whose lives are marked by suffering, our sisters and brothers. When we are broken and cast aside, embrace us in your love. Restore us, O God, let your face shine. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O source of all life, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth. 
For those who are here, I will bring communion to you, and in a moment you may sit. When I come, if you would stand, um, I'm using little tongs to keep it very safe, so um, I'll try not. To, I'll try to hit your hands when I drop the weight from your hands and not hit the floor. Um, but that's how we're doing communion here, and it's just in one kind. For those who are at home. Uh, our dear friends who are viewing online, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints in the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now, in a spiritual connectedness as we are always connected in Christ and always one in that body of the saints. There is a prayer if you downloaded it that you can use to help you with that time of spiritual communion. My friends, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to you.
Let us continue together in prayer as we say. God of our hope, in this Eucharist we find the source of all your blessings. Nourished in these holy mysteries, may we, with our lives, give you continual thanks and praise. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you to sit for a moment while we listen to a little bit of our choir, not here, but previously recorded at other times. Maybe we won't be listening to them sing now, thank the Lord God, uh, or it may come on magically in a moment. Uh, we'll see Jerry's been fumbling way back there with his phone. Um, just want to thank you again for being here. Wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks to those who've helped out. I was thinking earlier of some of the strange things uh, about this weekend. And haven't missed CFL football at all until today, but growing up in Saskatchewan, this would be the weekend where you have the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and all of those great rivalries. At um, any rate, those sort of things jumped into mind of what's different. And I can't say this is the strangest Thanksgiving because I still have a big turkey at home from Marlena and myself and our other two household members, which is my dog Willow and Mel the cat, who is always fascinated by big birds. Um, but I think our strangest one was an American Thanksgiving when we lived in Chicago. And we were headed on our way to Michigan to see a friend who we've been invited for Thanksgiving. And we hit one of those lake effect super snowstorms when we hit South Bend, Indiana. Couldn't see a thing. I pulled off at the, at the you know, where I could pull off the off ramp. Just about got barreled over by a semi that was going way too fast. And just went across and turned around and headed home. We found a, a deli that was still open. We managed to get a little turkey breast and we went home and celebrated by ourselves. Um, unexpected, unusual, and one of the happiest Thanksgivings we ever had. Um, and there was football, but America. So my friends, however you celebrate, celebrate safely, celebrate with God, think about the things we have to be thankful for. And may the bringer of light bless you, may the bright sun of Mary bless you, and may the light of Christ dwell in you. In all you do and in all that you may become, may the way of Christ be the path you tread, and the kingdom of heaven be your home. In the blessing of our God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this day and forever. Amen. 